Andy's Lake in Pencoid is a really unusual venue. It was created by damming two valleys. And what that's meant is that you've got a constantly dropping depth of water in front of you from a matter of a foot in the edge going out to probably 30 foot in the middle. You're always fishing on a slope at Andy's Lake. It's got a great head of big roach, skimmers, there's carp, big perch. It's a really unusual venue. Although it was stocked, so it's not actually a natural venue, the fish have never been tampered with. They've been left to their own devices. You see around me now, it's full of reeds. There's lots of cover for these fish to sit in. And they're not necessarily always the easiest fish to catch. What we're going to look at today is actually how to approach a lake like Andes when it's the middle of winter, lots of the fishing's quite difficult, the fish aren't going to give themselves up. We've got a good depth of water here, but it's challenging. It's not always easy to fish on a slope. If you've got a perfectly flat bottom, if you feed your bait, it's not going to go anywhere. You're going to be fishing in one spot, whereas on a slope, if you feed your bait too hard or you feed it right on your pole tip, you've got a chance that as the day goes on, you actually find that you're not necessarily fishing anywhere near your bait. And that's one thing that we do need to cover today. The ground bait mix today couldn't be simpler. We're specifically looking to target roach. If we catch any skimmers, that's a bonus. It's simply gross gardons and soil mixed 50-50. It's a foolproof ground bait for catching roach. Everybody knows that gro gross gardons is a brilliant roach mix. And what the soil does when you're fishing on a slope like this is it means that you can actually put the balls in relatively soft, but there's decent weight in the ground bait to carry it to the bottom and break down and release all the feed that you're actually putting in the ground bait. What we're gonna to look to feed in the ground bait is maggots, casters, some hemp seed, and if the fishing's good, possibly some chopped worm. And what we're going to do is look to feed probably eight to 10 inches short of the pole with the pole cup at the start, because when the ground bait then goes into the peg, there's no chance of the balls hitting the bottom and actually rolling down this slope and away from where you're fishing. When you're fishing for roach, it's so important to know the depth that you're fishing, whether that's an inch or so off the bottom, dead depth, or maybe two inches on the bottom if you're looking to catch bigger fish. And at Andy's Lake, there can be as big a change in depth by going out six to eight inches on your pole of maybe a foot. And that makes fishing very difficult if you've thrown your bait at the start, because unless you're making a big cloud and perhaps fishing over a big area off the bottom where it's not necessarily crucial to know exactly what depth off the bottom you are, then it's difficult to actually fish comfortably in the knowledge that you are fishing directly over the top of your bait all the time. And that's really important in the winter when bites are at a premium. Let's just take a moment to look at the rig that we're using to catch these roach today. We'll start at the hook. So there's a Census 3050, which is a good strong hook, but it's fine wire enough that it's not going to put the roach off. It's not going to look unnatural when you're presenting a single maggot or a single caster. It's not a big heavy hook that the roach will reject. That's fished on a six inch hook length of 0.9, which again is perfectly strong. If you hook a big fish, a bonus fish today, maybe a perch or a bream, you're not going to have any trouble on 09. You, you should get pretty much anything out unless you're unlucky. Moving up from the hook length, We've got two number nine droppers, probably three inches apart. When I'm catching a lot of fish, particularly roach, in a depth of eight foot that we've got here today at six meters, I find big droppers really important because if a fish intercepts that bait, as you're lowering the rig in, we're lowering probably the final four inches of the rig slowly into the peg. And if a fish intercepts the bait and holds one of those shots up, you'll see a much better indication on the float than if you were to say fish a number 11 or a number 10. Lots of people fish small shots for roach, which is fine if you're fishing through the water, strung out rigs, but when you're fishing for them positively on the bottom and you're catching a lot of fish, try using larger dropper shots because it really will make a difference to your bites. I don't necessarily think it makes any difference to the number of bites you get, but it definitely shows the indications better on your float. So moving up from those two droppers there, three inches apart, above 
the top dropper is probably eight inches up to the olivet. And below the olivet, we've then got a string of shot. There's six shots below the olivet and two above. The reason that I've got that string of shot below the olivet is actually to add rigidity to that part of the rig. I used to fish an olivet with just a couple of shots either side. And what I used to have happen was the hook quite often getting caught above the olivet. By just stringing these shots below and putting a little boom in the rig, it means that there's less chance of your hook actually getting tangled up behind the olivet, which when you're catching lots of fish is a nightmare. You end up going backwards in the match if you get tangled. So important just to do little things like this in your rig that make all the difference at the end of the match. Another point worth mentioning is actually the main line. This is 0.17 diameter line. And there's one reason for that, and that's just again to add rigidity to the rig and prevent tangles. If you fished a thinner diameter line, you'd almost certainly get spin-ups throughout the day when you're catching lots of fish. The heavier main line eliminates that, and it doesn't affect the amount of fish you catch. The fish aren't inspecting your main line when you're catching lots of them. Moving from the main line up to the float, this is a float that I've used a lot over the last 12 months. It's the Census Avon. It's a similar body to the Jean Francois, but it's got a carbon stem and a fibre bristle. Really nice stable float, and the fibre bristle just means that it's lovely and sensitive, and you see all the indications through that bristle. It's a lovely float for fishing for roach on rivers and still waters. It's one that's really worth checking out if you're doing some winter silverfish fishing. Moving from the float up to the elastic. Now this is a micro bore hollow elastic. It's something that I've used a lot, particularly when fishing lakes in the winter for silverfish. This is a six to eight micro bore, the green hollow. It's lovely and forgiving. You don't bump roach, but it just powers up enough that you can swing these quality fish to hand. You can swing a fish of probably six ounces on this if you're really catching well. And it just beefs up enough that normal solid elastics mean that you'd be netting them. And if you're in a fish race, every second counts. These hollow elastics just give you that little bit of extra beef that means the fish comes to hand and in the net quickly. Try them next time you're looking at a silverfish elastic. They're brilliant. Something that's worth talking about when you're fishing for lots of small fish is your setup. It's so important to make sure that you're comfortable when you're fishing. It doesn't matter so much if you're only looking for a handful of bites off big fish, but when you're fishing for small fish at speed, particularly on natural venues where you've not got a platform and the banks are perhaps a little bit uneven and it's not always the most comfortable position to fish in, to make sure that you have everything to hand the way that I'm set up today means that I can be fishing at my most efficient. I've got all my hook bait options on my left hand side here on the bait waiter. I've got maggots, hemp seed and casters. Anything that needs to be added to the ground bait, which is on my big tray behind me, can be done so without even looking. I can simply put my hand, pick the bait up, mix it through the ground bait all the time I'm watching my float. I've not got to get off my box, I've not got to stop fishing all the time you're there and you're fishing without wasting any time. Similarly, if I want to change rigs, I can ship in, take my top kit off or the top four today because we're fishing in slightly deeper water and put it on my roost kit, again to my left hand side. Everything is set off the, de off the deck, so there's no chance of rigs getting tangled on the floor. And when you're setting up multiple rigs to fish for fish like roach, Often you'll set up two of each in case you tangle during the match. It makes such a difference to your end result. And you'll see then as I shipped in, the roll is set behind me, so you don't have to look round, you know exactly where it is. You can ship back, hit the roller, break the joint on the pole, drop the pole then, into the tulip clip, everything's safe and secure, there's no chance of the pole rolling into the lake, you're nice and comfortable and you're fishing in the most efficient way possible 
to make sure that you put more fish in the net during the match and hopefully secure that sectional match win that everybody's looking for when they get out on the bank on the weekend. So we started the session today with that initial feed fed short of the pole tip and the session's not panned out exactly how I expected. I thought today it would be a case of putting the initial feed in full of casters and maggots and some hemp seed and then fishing for the fish over the top of that and just topping up regularly with the pole, t pole pot depending on the number of fish that were coming into the peg. But what we found today is perhaps due to the volume of rain that we've had recently it's washed quite a lot of colour into the lake and I think the fish are coming into the peg but actually the, the best way of getting them to settle has been by feeding small balls of ground bait every chuck or every other chuck by hand importantly short of the pole tip as we talked about earlier there is this slope here so by feeding these balls of ground bait short of the pole tip it just seems to be drawing more and more fish into the peg all the time there's a lot of roach in this lake but they don't get fished for very often and i think they have a tendency to actually back away from the feed but by throwing these little balls in regularly you're just creating that little bit of attraction in the peg that's constantly sucking more and more fish in from the surrounding area there's plenty of feed down there when they turn up but because they're coming in in big quantities they're eating that bait very quickly and that's just what these little balls are doing they're introducing more feed all the time and just helping to settle the fish down on the deck because the ground bait's heavy it's going in breaking down and releasing the few casters maggots and grains of hemp that are there for the fish to start feeding on it's without a doubt been the best way of feeding today We've altered between maggots and casters on the hook today. Often you'll find that a caster will catch you with bigger fish, but it can be a slower bait. Today, it seems to be that casters, in actual fact, get you the quickest bite, and there's no difference in the stamp of fish. Maggots don't seem to have really played a part today, whereas in previous sessions that I've had here, I've caught really well on maggots and struggled on casters. But it just goes to show that every day is different. It's perhaps due to the amount of casters that are going into the ground bait, but it does seem today that the fish want a single caster, a nice dark caster. The rig's now laid probably two inches over depth on this shelf. And by introducing the peg, really introducing the rig really slowly to the peg, lowering the final four inches of the float down into the peg, you're getting really nice slow indications on the float. One thing that I find quite important when I'm fishing for roach, particularly when you've got a decent volume of fish in front of you, is to actually leave a decent amount of the bristle showing. You see people, they, they dot the float down to an absolute pimple, which is fine if you're fishing shallow and the fish are intercepting the bait and they're feeling the resistance of the rig, but when you're actually laying a bit of line on the deck, you want to watch every indication on the float. And it's important when that float goes that you move the pole over the top of the float, let it develop, the float goes and you strike. Always give the fish time to take the bait fully. Don't strike at the first indication because you've got more chance of bumping fish. And when you're trying to be efficient in a match, bump fish lead to wasted time. It's just important to make sure that you line up each bite properly before you strike. It means more fish hit the back of the pan. Presentation is one of the most important things when it comes to roach fishing. The way we started the session is actually by fishing dead depth or just off the deck working the rig on this slope that we have here and as the session then moves on you find that you'll catch better fish by just presenting the rig slightly over depth when these roach start feeding on the ground bait when they first come into the peg they they're quite excited by it and they start try tend to feed slightly off the bottom and they intercept the bits of bait that have come off as as the rigs as the balls have sunk into the peg little bits of the ground bait would have popped off. Although it's a relatively inert mix, you can't stop bits of the ground bait from flaking off and popping off. And when the roach first come in, they do have a tendency not to actually feed really hard on the deck. But as the session progresses, you'll find that by just fishing slightly over depth, you'll catch a better stamp of fish. Another point that's worth mentioning, particularly in winter, in these colder months, when you're fishing for silvers is if you get spells where the peg quietens down perhaps you're wondering where the fish have gone try left and right of the feed or even past it you'll often find that by just moving the rig 
to the left hand side or the right hand side if it's towing perhaps down downstream of your feed you'll suddenly get another run of fish I think what happens is that the fish just naturally become wary in the winter generally the water is slightly clearer and they just sit off the feed they feel more comfortable sitting off the feed in the summer they come in and they stay in the peg all day eating every last bit of bait you feed but it's not necessarily a case that all the bait's gone when you stop getting bites it may be that the volume of fish has just decreased slightly so they've moved off the feed and they're just sort of recongregating before they then move back in and start feeding freely again another point that's worth mentioning today is that when the peg started to slow actually loose feeding as well as throwing these regular balls of ground bait has brought more fish back into the peg I've just had a slightly slow spell but by loose feeding some maggots it's brought the fish back in once I get the fish into a decent frenzy in the peg I'll then stop loose feeding and just feed the maggots to make sure they don't come off the bottom in eight foot of water it's quite difficult to catch fish quickly off the bottom unless they feed very shallow just lower the rig slowly into the peg there pick up a little pinch of maggots feed them into the peg and it really has now brought some fish back in and it's actually transformed the peg which makes all the difference in winter you can't rest on your laurels and just expect the fish to return they often don't unless you ring the dinner bell and start changing things your peg can just die and fade away from you Well, we've had a brilliant session at Andy's Lake today. When we got here this morning, it was freezing cold and absolutely tipping it down with icy cold rain. Not pleasant and not a good start to a session. But by feeding that ground bait at the start, we've gone in and caught some fish. And by regularly changing what we've done through the day, we had a little spell of an hour or so where feeding nuggets of ground bait packed with bait led to more fish coming into the peg. And we then had to change. The fish had backed off and it became more difficult. Typical of a winter session. But by loose feeding maggots, They've come back in and we've caught really well in the latter stages of the session. We've ended up with a really nice net of fish, probably 20 pounds of quality roach. A day like today is an opportunity to try and put these things into practice so that when you get into a match scenario and you're wondering how to get those extra few fish out of your peg, you've been and you've learned and that's what makes the difference in fishing. And I hope you've picked up some tips in this video that will stand you in good stead in your own fishing. Best of luck.